During the Parthian period in Mesopotamia, there were relatively few significant changes compared to the previous Seleucid rule. By the middle of the 2nd century BCE, local rulers in Mesopotamia had already asserted their independence. It is unclear whether this happened gradually or all at once, and whether it occurred peacefully or through conflict. One of the prominent cities during this time was Seleucia, which was treated more favorably by the Parthians than it had been by the Seleucids. The local government in Seleucia retained its autonomy, and Parthian troops were stationed nearby in a garrison called Tesiphon, which later grew into a city and became the new capital, replacing Seleucia. In the southern region of Mesopotamia known as Kerosene, a local ruler named Hyspeacenes, with a Seleucid background, declared his independence around 125 BCE and issued coins with Greek inscriptions. He renamed the city Antiochia on the lower Tigris to Spasinu Cherax, making it his capital. However, his rule over the region was short-lived, as the Parthian governor Himerus eventually regained control over Babylon and Seleucia, possibly around 127 BCE. Himerus, the Parthian governor, faced accusations of abusing his power, oppressing the cities of Mesopotamia, and causing destruction and death. This led to a period of instability and uncertainty. However, Parthian sovereignty was eventually restored under the reign of the 9th Assassid king, Mithridates II, who ascended the throne around 124 BCE. Mithridates II recaptured all of Mesopotamia, conquered Kerosene, and gained control of northern Mesopotamian kingdoms like Adiabene, Gordin, and Osrin. Around 95 BCE, the Parthians played a role in placing the Armenian Tigranes II on the throne of Armenia. Contacts with Rome also began during the reign of Mithridates II, particularly through Lucius Cornelius Sulla, who was sent by the Roman Senate to govern Cilicia in Anatolia. An ambassador from Mithridates II sought a treaty with Sulla in 92 BCE, but no agreement was reached due to conflicting instructions from Rome. Overall, the Parthian period in Mesopotamia saw a continuation of local rule and independence, with the Parthian rulers exerting their authority over the region and making their mark on the political landscape. Tigranes II, taking advantage of internal conflicts among claimants to the Parthian throne, expanded Armenian territory into Mesopotamia. The smaller states in the north pledged their allegiance to him. However, in 69 BCE, the Roman general Lucius Licinius Lucullus captured Tigranokerta, Tigranes' capital, and Mesopotamia returned to Parthian rule. This marked the beginning of a period dominated by wars between the Romans and the Parthians, shaping the political history of Mesopotamia. When the Parthians conquered Mesopotamia, they kept the local administrations and rulers intact. According to Pliny the Elder, the Parthian Empire comprised 18 kingdoms, with 11 referred to as the Upper Kingdoms or Satrapies, and 7 as the Lower Kingdoms, situated in the plains of Mesopotamia. The center of the Lower Kingdoms was ancient Babylonia, known as Beth Aramai in Aramaic, and it was governed directly by the Parthian ruler. In the south was Kerosene, while to the northeast of Tesiphon, the new Parthian capital replacing Seleucia, was Garamea, with its capital at modern Kirkuk. Adia Bene had Arbela as its capital, and farther north was a province called Beth Nuhadra in Aramaic, which seemed to be governed by a general directly responsible to the Parthian king, as it faced the brunt of Roman invasions. Nisibis was the main city in the desert region of Arabistan, but towards the end of the Parthian period, the desert caravan city of Hatra claimed hegemony over this area. In the northwest, there were other principalities such as Sophim, where Tigranes' capital was located, Gordin, Zabdasin, near modern Salamaric in eastern Turkey, to the east of Sophim, and Azrin, with its capital Edessa, modern Urfa, Turkey, which was situated within the Roman sphere of influence. Ruling over all these small kingdoms earned Mithridates II the title King of Kings, a title also used by later Parthian rulers. The defeat of the Roman legions under Marcus Licinius Crassus at the Battle of Carre, Carre is the Roman name for Heron, in 53 BCE marked the beginning of a period of Parthian power and expansion in the Middle East. However, under Mark Antony's leadership in 36-34 BCE, the tide turned, and the power dynamics in the region remained unstable with Rome and Parthia competing for dominance. Armenia became a constant source of conflict between the two powers, each vying to install their candidate on the Armenian throne. Parthian rule in Mesopotamia was not absolute, leading to instances of unrest. For example, during the reign of Artabanus III, 12 to 38 CE, Jewish brigands Asenaeus and Anileus established a free state north of Tesiphon, which persisted for 15 years until the Parthians overcame it. As cuneiform records ceased, and classical sources focused on the wars between Rome and Parthia, information about internal affairs in Mesopotamia became scarce. Despite the ongoing influence of Hellenism in the region, Iranian influences began to rise in prominence during the last two centuries of Parthian rule. Central authority weakened due to the usurpations of powerful nobles and local kings. Seleucia revolted against central control at the end of Artabanus' reign, maintaining its independence for a considerable period. 
Peace was briefly interrupted by Roman Emperor Nero, who sought to place his client on the Armenian throne, leading to several years of conflict before a peace agreement was reached in 63 CE. During the internal rivalries within the Parthian state, the Romans saw an opportunity to attack, and the control over Armenia became the cause of Roman Emperor Trajan's incursion into Mesopotamia in 116 CE. Northern Mesopotamia, including Adia Bene and the entire Tigris-Euphrates Basin, was incorporated as a province into the Roman Empire. Trajan even advanced to the Persian Gulf but eventually died due to illness. His successor, Hadrian, decided to make peace, relinquishing the conquered territories in Mesopotamia, although client states remained. During the second century of the Common Era, the Parthian history experienced a dark period, while the caravan cities of Palmyra, Hatra, and Mezin flourished, growing in wealth and influence. The ongoing struggle for control over Armenia continued between the two major powers, Rome and Parthia, leading to occasional hostilities. In 164 to 165 CE, the Roman general Gaius Avidius Cassius captured the capital cities of Tesiphon and Seleucia, but an epidemic forced the Romans to retreat, resulting in a peace settlement. However, the epidemic spread across the Roman Empire, causing significant devastation. The terms of peace favored the Romans, giving them control over Nisibis and the Khabur River Valley. The next significant conflict was initiated by the Roman Emperor Septimius Severus, who sought to punish the Parthians for supporting his rival Pescennius Niger in annexing some Mesopotamian territory. In 198 CE, Severus took and sacked Tesiphon but had to retreat due to the lack of supplies in the devastated countryside. An attempted siege of Hatra in 199 also failed, leading to another peace agreement. In 217 CE, Caracalla, the Roman Emperor, invaded Adia Bene due to conflict between rival claimants to the Parthian throne, Volagesus IV or V, and Artabanus V. However, Caracalla was assassinated on his way to Carre, and peace was once again established. As the Parthian rule persisted, little changed in the administration and institutions of Mesopotamia compared to the Seleucid era, except for a weakening of central authority under the feudal Parthians. Hellenism was not prohibited, but it waned towards the end of the Parthian rule. The population of Mesopotamia grew significantly under the Parthians, alongside increased trade and commerce. However, the coinage of the later Parthian rulers became more debased due to internecine wars and the lack of central control. Arab and Armenian infiltration resulted in demographic changes in the region, as well as an influx of Jews who fled to Mesopotamia after the fall of the Temple of Jerusalem in 70 CE. With merchants from different regions passing through or settling in Mesopotamia, the population became more diverse than ever before. During the Parthian occupation of Mesopotamia, there was a significant shift in religious practices. The ancient religions and cults of the region came to an end and were gradually replaced by a mix of Hellenic and Oriental mystery religions, as well as Iranian cults. Local Semitic cults, such as those dedicated to Bel and Allah, thrived alongside temples devoted to Greek gods like Apollo. Shamash, the sun deity, was also worshipped in places like Hatra. During this period, the influence of Jewish monotheism, with its rabbinic schools and organized community under a leader called the Exilarch, had a notable impact on the local population. By the end of Artabanus III's reign, the royal family of Adia Bene had converted to Judaism. In addition to Judaism, Christianity and various baptismal sects began to spread in Mesopotamia during the first two centuries of the Common Era. The influence of Parthian Zoroastrianism reinforced existing local Zoroastrian communities in Mesopotamia from the time of the Achaemenians. Another Gnostic baptismal religion called Mandaeanism, which still exists today, originated during this period. Although Christian missionaries were active, it seems that their initial efforts were mainly focused on Jewish communities. In terms of art and architecture, the Parthians had a significant impact. Local schools of art flourished, initially influenced by Greek ideals. However, during the last two centuries of Parthian rule, a distinct Parthian style emerged in the art of Mesopotamia and other regions. Parthian art can be characterized as popular, reflecting the cultural diversity among the populace. It often displayed an expressionist and stylized quality, in contrast to the naturalistic art of the Greeks and Romans. Parthian art in Mesopotamia showcased unique features such as total frontality in portraits, representing figures in full face, and a sense of otherworldliness. Another characteristic was the frequent portrayal of the flying gallop in sculpture and painting, reflecting the importance of cavalry and mounted archers in Parthian armies. Parthian costume, with baggy trousers, became popular throughout the Middle East and was depicted in various artworks. In architecture, the Parthian period saw the use of avens, arches in porticos, and domed vaults, which may have originated in Mesopotamia. Parthian art also influenced the art of other regions, including the Nabataeans and Roman territory, and left a significant impact on the art of the Middle East. Parthian was an Iranian language that used the Aramaic alphabet for writing. However, Parthian had a significant number of words and phrases borrowed from Aramaic, making it challenging to learn without proper scribal training. 
the Aramaic alphabet was better suited for Syriac, which is also a Semitic language with an emphasis on consonants. As a result, reading Parthian was difficult, and it was mainly used by scribes or priests for official and religious writings. During the Parthian period, there is a lack of extensive literature. The oral literature of the Parthians, known for their minstrels and poetry, did not have a significant impact in Mesopotamia. The settled society in Mesopotamia contrasted with the heroic and feudal society of the Iranian nomads, which continued to influence Parthian culture even after they settled in the region. However, during the end of the Parthian period, Syriac literature began to emerge. Syriac is a form of Christian Aramaic and shows some elements of Parthian influence. The transition from Aramaic to Parthian writing can be observed in a bilingual inscription, in Greek and Parthian, on a bronze statue from Seleucia, dated around 150 to 151 CE. It recounts how Vala Jesus III defeated the king of Mezine and gained control of the entire country. After this period, the term Aramaic was no longer used, and instead, the focus shifted to Parthian and Syriac, both written in a new cursive alphabet.